Turbulence is chaotic. Let's make some sense out of it. You're setting up your CFD simulation, you're running through all of your equations, you get to your turbulence model, you select your k-omega model, but then you get to the boundary conditions. Huh. What do I put in for there? k and omega? What, what, what values do I have for that? Never fear! Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect, and today we are going to talk about practical CFD modeling, turbulence. So let's get into it. Turbulence, when we're talking about boundary conditions, we don't actually normally talk about the physical transport equations for them. We don't typically deal with it in terms of k and omega or k and epsilon or whatever particular turbulence model you have. Uh, we normally like to deal with it in uh, more accessible terminology and then we convert that into the transport equations. So the first way we normally classify it is with the turbulent viscosity ratio. You've got your normal fluid viscosity and then we have our turbulent viscosity and we will look at the ratio of those two. And that ratio is one of the first things that we'll look at as specifying for a boundary condition. If you're looking for reasonable values, I highly recommend the NASA Turbulence Modeling Resource. There is a link at the bottom of the screen. I will also put it in the description for the video. Loads of information there, an excellent resource. But if you also look at the table on the right of the side of the screen here, this will give you some typical values for the turbulent viscosity ratio that you can use. So a ratio of 1, that's pretty low. That's very low turbulence. A uh, ratio of 10, that's fairly medium. Average medium turbulence, that's sort of my default value. A uh, ratio of 100, that's pretty darn high. You're getting pretty turbulent flow there. A ratio of 1,000, that's really, really high. Uh, you can see that potentially at some points in your simulation. I, I have seen that at some cases. I've never set it at boundaries, but it does occur at some points if you have uh, bad meshes. You can tolerate that at non-critical spots in your mesh, and you might accept that just for debugging purposes, but it's definitely a warning sign that you have something bad with your mesh. If you have a viscosity ratio higher than that of around 10,000, that's not physically possible on Earth you're definitely going to get your simulation crashing at that point. Just expect it to happen. So those are your general viscosity ratios to keep an idea of. But most turbulence models are true equation models, which means we need a second boundary condition. Our second boundary condition is normally the turbulence intensity. Remember that in our classic RANS definition of turbulence, we take our velocity and we separate it out into two halves. We've got the steady velocity, and then we have the turbulent varying velocity element. Well, the turbulence intensity is just the ratio of those two components. It's the turbulent velocity divided by the steady velocity. And we express this normally as a percentage. So if you're looking for a low amount of turbulence intensity, that's around 1%. 5% uh, would be medium, and 10% would be a high turbulence intensity. Anything higher than 10%, you're talking pretty darn high turbulence I and mean, you're starting to get into unrealistic terms. If you have any doubts about these, if you want something more realistic, my default answer to all of that is always do validation studies. Of course, up to this point, I've been talking about turbulence at boundary conditions that are away from our body, all at the edges of our domain, at the edges of our fluid. But we also have the boundary condition that's our most important one the boundary on our body, our physical object, which is the thing we actually care about. And that is our boundary layer. And when we're talking about the boundary layer, this is all about the Y+, plus, which is a non-dimensional measurement of the height of the first cell. When I say the first cell, I am literally talking about the very first cell in the mesh on our body. So we're talking something very, very small to try and capture the effects of that boundary layer y plus is that non-dimensional measurement of that height. We do it non-dimensionally so that we can keep pretty consistent metrics of measurement of what to expect for y plus values. The formula for y plus is in the bottom right hand of your side of your screen, but basically it is the wall friction velocity times y, which is the actual physical distance away from your wall, 
divided by your kinematic viscosity. The reason this is important is because of the law of the wall. Everything is turbulent everywhere except in the boundary layer where we have this laminar sublayer. We have this little subregion right below near the wall where things actually are not turbulent. CFD knows this. The turbulence models know this, and they have special ways of handling that. They have what are called wall functions or wall damping functions. They have different ways of handling that, and how they handle that affects how you do your meshing. So if you have a wall function, a wall function is going to assume that the entire laminar sublayer is all within that first cell. It's all within just one cell, that single first cell. And that is going to be if you have a Y plus greater than 30. And so if you're assuming that, if you're telling your turbulence model to use that type of a wall function, you need to set your mesh to create that type of a Y plus, and you need to go back with plotting afterwards and check that you actually achieved that type of a Y plus. This is actually why most engineers, when they're setting up their mesh, they actually go pretty conservative in that case. Uh, they'll actually target a Y plus of probably even 60 or 80 to give themselves a large margin for error. On the other end, if you're going the other way around and you actually want to resolve that full laminar sublayer, you're going to go much, much lower. And you want to target Y pluses of probably much less than 12. You want Y pluses of probably five where you're actually going to be resolving that entire laminar sublayer. So that's all about the Y plus, And it comes down to the fact of be conscious of what you are telling your turbulence model to do because that affects your meshing strategy. So that summarizes up the basics of turbulence modeling for practical CFD modeling. When it comes to specifying your boundary conditions, just remember the two major things is your turbulent viscosity ratio, which is for a medium value, you're looking at around an RT of 10 for medium viscosity ratio and your turbulent intensity which for medium values, you're looking for an intensity of about 5%. And then when it comes to your wall boundary condition, that is the boundary condition at your object, Y plus, and check your Y plus values. Remember, you pick the turbulence model. The turbulence model is not smart enough to know about the mesh. You have to make sure that you're matching up the right mesh settings with the right turbulence settings. I hope this has helped you out. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.